because I don't have anything to do here. Please raise your hand. That's okay. I'll work with you. Um, can can you check the microphone? Do you have the microphone? There's a microphone, right? All right. Is it on? Yeah. Cool. So that's gonna be complicated because those kind of microphones go really, really bad with long beard. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. While I'm talking like this, I apologize. <laughs> All right, so uh, creating offline IoT um, experience with beacons. Who has ever played with the beacons before? One guy. Good, good. Who has no idea what a beacon is? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's good news because I have some stuff about beacons. So that's who I am. My name is Laurent. As I said, I'm the counterpart of William Heng, who is a cash based developer advocate based in New York. Uh, that submitted this talk. But beacons. I'm based in Paris. You can find me on Twitter, you can send me an email. That's a tag cloud of stuff I like, but that's enough about me because we're already late. So what's a beacon? Um, that's a lighthouse. A lighthouse emits a signal to anyone that wants to see that signal. It's just broadcasting to the world. It's not broadcasting something in particular like you would have with uh, Wi-Fi people send the for uh, Wi-Fi, you know, this kind of thing. It's just, hey, here's a signal, and do whatever you want to do. If you're on a boat, then that's, that's, that's great, because that's what you want. You want a signal to help you in the context of where you are, which is on the sea, to find where you're going, which is port. Oh. So that's what a beacon is. The beacon we want to talk about today looks more like this. This is a small piece of hardware. There's different size of beacons. Those are common ones from common beacons company. And what they all have in common is this thing, that they run on Bluetooth LE. The full version of Bluetooth, so it's low energy, with a, I guess with a key of that size, you can, that's, that's probably that, that big. Um, battery can last up to two, three years, because beacon doesn't broadcast much information. It broadcasts the UID. <coughs> Broadcast 3A, a UID, like a 16 byte big, non human readable UID, and two additional ID, major version, minor version. That's the uh, iBeacon version. iBeacon is the uh, Apple standard of beacon introduced by Apple, but that was like, I don't know, three or four years ago, maybe more. I'm pretty new to that beacon stuff. Before William told me it existed, I had no idea what it was, so th I'm, I'm a two weeks old baby in terms of beacon. So I think it's four. Four years old. Uh, it's an Apple thing, but of course it's uh, it's Bluetooth, right? So everything that works with Bluetooth, it works with it. It works. And as I said, there's uh, a UID, two different <coughs> versions in the minor version. There's two other stuff that you find in most beacon standards. There's a byte to tell you about the range of the beacon you want it to work. From a range perspective, a beacon like this, Bluetooth LE is about 50 meters. And you can decide of that range. You can configure that range using that off -light. So it's very much used for indoor stuff. Like GPS is something outdoors. You know how a GPS works. Pretty much the same thing. It's broadcasting some stuff. It's localizing something, but it's outdoors. There is no uh, limit of range in satellite. Wi-Fi has a broader limit of range. NFC has a very small range limit, probably at 10, 10 centimeters. Uh, RFID is probably about 100 centimeters, so it's quite uh, small too. The uh, best, from a size perspective, way of emitting something is Bluetooth, and it's low energy, it's much less consuming than Wi-Fi. So yes, they have a bike to tell you to configure the range of emission of a beacon. There's another bike that can be used to maybe tell you about the battery of the beacon. And then some other standards like Alt Beacon or Edison Beacon. Yeah. Alt Beacon, Edison Beacon. Edison is the one on the bottom. It's a Google thing, it's new, it started a year ago. Uh, and it allows you to broadcast actually more, much more information. One of the interesting things with Beacon is telemetry, it's a good use case. 
telemetry is basically broadcasting one stuff, which is a temperature, a battery level, uh, just a, a small sensor that gives you one thing at one time. Um, so that's what it is. It's a beacon. It's just emitting stuff, which is nice, but if you don't have an app that works with that beacon, then it's absolutely useless. Uh, so obviously you have to write an app that knows the UID of the beacon, the different version number of the beacon, and when it receives that signal, it can do stuff. So quickly, some use cases about uh, beacon. Uh, there was a lot of people that very excited in marketing and sales about enriching the user experience of people based on the context. What that means is, <coughs> if you're on a store, <coughs> and you're walking around the store with your phone app, and getting close to a beacon, and you might have a notification that says, hey, this thing on the right is on sales, 50 percent sales for people that have the app. Okay. So it, it, it lets you give notification, give something back to a user based on where he is, usually indoors. It can serve other purpose. If you tend to lose stuff, you know, like a, a VGA Mac adapter that happened, <laughs> maybe you could add a beacon on this thing and your phone will know what that beacon is. And when the beacon, which is your adapter, is good, not in range anymore with your phone, your phone will say, you just lost your damn thingy. It's not on my range anymore. Where is it? I'd work with carrying, that work with other stuff, that work with a bike, you put that on a bike, go grab a beer, and then if your phone is saying your bike is moving, then someone is probably stealing your bike. Um, great use case, you're in a museum, and you have the, the, the app open, and you walk among the very cool thing in the museum, and each time you walk next to your beacon, the beacon tells you, okay, so that's what it is, that's who made this beautiful art thing, and that's why you did it. And you information in context of where you are. Tracking sounds bad, but you know, that could perfectly be used for tracking, tracking stuff in your uh, Amazon big thing where they store stuff, places where they store things. Uh, they use RFID tag to actually uh, locate things. You could also use uh, um, beacons to, as I said, use stuff. Um, Telemetry, scavenger hunts, when you go to conferences, they want you, you, you take the app of the conference and they want to make sure that you go to every place you have to go to. So each time you approach a beacon with your app, your app will say, oh, you've been here. So that's sort of a gamif gamification thing. Um, you enforce them. You're completely lost. My first time, who, who is this first time I forced it here? That's my first time. Okay. I got lost so many times already today. Beacon could help. You know, if you have a venue uh, map on the app and it can actually tell you based on people where you are and what to do, that, that would be nice. Because I got lost. Anyway. Question is what's uh, Cache Base Developer Advocate doing here? Because I'm working for a NoSQL company, I work in database. I have no reason to be here. Well, we have this thing called uh, Cache Base Mobile and it's here to handle one problem, which is no bars. No problem. No bars as no reception on your phone, you're out of network, you don't have anything anymore. You, you, if you have an app that relies just on the internet, then your app doesn't work. So it's a wonderful animation to explain that to you. You're connected to the cloud because you have network that great. You have a very poor reception that's less great. And from a user perspective, waiting, everybody hates that. You don't have network anymore. Mm. And then your app doesn't work because it you know, requires to be online. So if your beacon app, when you find a beacon, requires you to do a call to the server and say, what am I supposed to do with that beacon? And you have no internet connection, that means that beacon is useless. Because again, it's just emitting an ID. Say, hey, I'm a beacon, my name is that thing, I'm version 1.2, please do something. But then if you don't have any internet connection, you can't do something. So usually from a mobile app perspective, you end up having a very frustrated, frustrated user because the app doesn't work because you have no network. It's, it has to be online to work. And it's the same for several beacon apps. Your app has to be online to get the info that's supposed to show you based on the idea of the beacon. 
that's a very generic definition of cash-based model. <coughs> People uninstall stuff because your app sucks, because it's freezing, crashing, or because it's slow. Usually slow can be uh, associated with having no network. Sometimes it doesn't even work. The problem is data allocation. To make this work, you have to be, you have to have, sorry, local data, and be able to sync the data when you have network, when you're online. So that's the, that's the idea to make it to have the best user experience possible. <coughs> There's too many animation on the slides, and then you have a very happy user that gives you a great rating and that will keep on using your app, which is great. So again, what am I doing here? We have this thing called cache-based mobile. It's based on two things, cache-based data and sync gateway. Cache-based data is an embedded database. So when you run this database in your app, on your phone, or on the Raspberry, or, or anything, if you're not connected to the internet, that's fine. You have a local database, you have the data. And then once you're connected to the internet, maybe you want to get an update on what the data is. Because Beacon, as I said, is just this thing that's going to stay for two or three years, depending on the battery life of the thing. And maybe you want to repurpose that Beacon. Let's take that uh, supermarket example again. You're walking down the alley, and then there's a notification that says, oh, this product is on sale. Once this product is fully sold, you probably need to display another notification using the same Beacon, because you're not going to replace every Beacon this time you have to very expensive. So you have to repurpose your beacon. In order to do that, if that data was on the local database, then you need to sync back to the server and get the new definition, the new message to display based on what's now on sale. That's what we have the sync gateway, which is an app server, basically, that syncs the local database to the online big cache-based NoSQL server. That's what it does. That's how you do offline stuff with Beacon, basically. I took off my talk here. I'm not going to, because I have 10 minutes to do a demo and talk more about Cash Mobile. Um, Cash Base Lite, four important things. It's document based. When you store something in that local database, you just store a JSON file. And a JSON file, from a Java perspective, is just a map of string and object. And this is extremely normal, basic stuff. There's no SQL or anything, you're just taking one object, a JSON, and storing it in the database. Which is great, because now everybody's speaking about JSON. You know, all the HTTP API, REST API, they all speak JSON. You don't have any XML database, because XML is dying, you have JSON stuff. If you have a database, usually what you want to do is query the content of that database. Cache slides allow you to query the content of the JSON based on what we call an incremental map reduce function. Ugh. <coughs> Who knows what MapReduce is, and should I explain MapReduce quickly? That was were two separate questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. I will explain anyway. A map function takes a document, like a JSON file, and allows you to do something with it, like add an entry to an index, which is exactly what we're doing here when we write um, an incremental MapReduce function. Each time you add or modify or delete a document in the database, we will run the map function on that thing, that document, and if dog.types equals uh, beacon visit, then emit entry in index whatever. You've created an index, which is basically a two column table. There's a key, there's a value, and you can query that. That's how you query the content of the JSON file with cache size. Two other important things that lightning thing is here to tell you that this is all event driven in the sense that you don't have to, it's fully asynchronous. You don't have to tell the server, hey, give me the update, wait for the update to happen, then have the update, then do the query again. Uh, it's, there's a listener model, basically. So you can listen to document changes and do stuff while they change. It's important to have this model because when you go offline and online again, there's one thing that can happen that happens often, you have some uh, synchronization issue. I've updated the document while offline. Someone updated it already and sync the updated version was on the server. But there's a newer version online than the one I have on my phone and that I 
updated. So I have a conflict, <coughs> and the good thing is, with a listener model like this, you can listen to conflicts, and when you have a conflict, then you can decide what to do with the conflict. Am I gonna override anything, everything? Am I gonna do a merge based on the content of my document? There is no way to do automatic conflict uh, merge because that's very tight to your business model, so there's really nothing you can do from an automatic perspective. So with the listener, we give you the ability to decide how to merge these uh, conflicting documents. And then the other part with the uh, real sign is the sync gateway. You can sync the content of your local database to the server side of things, which is basically saying when you're online, you can get you can update your database because when you're offline, you still want everything to work. Which is why I'm here, because offline is important because you don't have network all the time. Let's say you are a music festival, there's beacon everywhere to basically track where people are going. When you are at a music festival, you try using your phone and call your friend. There's, there's, everybody's doing this, so the network doesn't work. There's no internet, it's, it's a fact. In IT conferences, it works better. I'm actually surprised that the Wi-Fi here works pretty well. But when it doesn't work, you still want to know where people go. So when you're walking around with your phone and the app as a service in the background that's basically storing every time you go next to a beacon, we can store that offline. And then when you go back online one day because you finally got the internet back because you got back home from the festival, then you can send all your information to uh, the database, the festival people. And now they can say, oh, there was way too many weights in this area or we should probably make that thing bigger or whatever. Quick sample of code, uh, iOS version, Android version, as I said, a JSON file is just a map or a dictionary. There's a key, there's a fill, <coughs> very simple. I have five minutes to talk about a single gateway, which I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna use those five minutes to hopefully do a working demo, which is always this weird thing to say, working demo. How do you test those Beacon thing. There's many ways to do that. Basically, what you require is a, a Bluetooth uh, thing. I have a Raspberry Pi with a Bluetooth key. And I was supposed to plug this somewhere with my battery that I have here, so I'm not going to do it anyway. But I have another Bluetooth key here. So I'm running this uh, image called the uh, Visual Beacon, which is just a, a Debian uh, instance that allow you to transmit stuff. Like, hey, I'm a beacon, get my data. So I run out beacon transmit. Hopefully this will work, which now don't, and it's frozen, but that's okay. I will <coughs> run my Android virtual machine, which hopefully also has, that's my uh, small micro with the Bluetooth key. It's gonna run. just picked up my beacon that say Debian Hello VM Beacon, which is cool, good. What I want to do now is pretend that uh, the beacon purpose has uh, changed. <coughs> so I'm going to repurpose my beacon by updating my document, <coughs> which is a JSON document is working. Hmm. Don't do demos at Toby, never work. Uh, what's wrong? So the goal of that demo was I'm assuming I have network issues. But it's a local on your machine. Yes, it is. 
need to be on the same network as everyone. It lives on the network and should work. Can can you try the first them first them fallback? supposed to happen is I was supposed to go on the same gateway <coughs> documents <Yay>. no <laughs> take my user the other user look at that document that said Debian hello VM Bacon and Beacon and let's say for them Save the document, so I'm repurposing my beacon. Go back to my app, launch the damn thing, and see that it's not saying, it's, it's now saying, call them something somewhere, which is not. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what was going to happen. And it's not happening for some reason. And I don't know why. Unfortunately, I cannot show you code, but as I said, the code is pretty straightforward. You have database objects, you have a map, you store the map in the database, done. And then you have this thing called a push replication or a pull replication, which is say I'm pushing data to the server or pulling data to the server. What's supposed to happen here is I'm pulling data through the SYN gateway to the local database to repurpose my beacon. And that doesn't work because I have networking issue. And I'm sad, and I should have done a video. As I said, I think you have a thing. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very much for your I'm going to do a tutorial.